Hey, Michael Lake here, altobone.com. A few weeks ago, I sent out a survey to a few hundred musicians, mostly trombone players, but there were other players in it as well. And I got some interesting results and it led me to want to put this video together based on something I, I saw a real need for. So the first question on the survey, as you can see here, was um, what musical skill are you best at or most proud of on your instrument? Now you can see that the number one answer was playing well with others. And I'm not entirely sure what that means, but I think it means, you know, being a good bandmate and, and listening in the band and, 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 and doing a good job for the group. But what I was really focused on is what was dead last, which was my ear. And notice right above it is playing what I hear in my head. Now, if you've read my books and seen my videos and my blog, you know that this is a central topic for me in terms of improvisation is being able to get the music inside your head out of your instrument. And clearly by what I saw on the, on the survey, those two things are in, in, in need of a lot of musicians. But the question that was most interesting to me was the second one, which is what skills do you most want to improve? And notice what the first answer is, which is knowing what to play over changes. Now, I know that's not shocking that that would be a response from kind of my audience, as it were. But, you know, I, I, it made me think that of, of all the videos, the books, the, the blog posts that I've written, it's like 95% of it is about hearing and, and connecting the music you hear in your head out through your, your instrument. And I still do believe that is the central challenge and central skill to be developed to be a good improviser. But I also realize that people want maybe a little more tangible ideas on how to do this thing called improvising over changes. So I wanted to put this video together and, and in thinking about how I was going to structure it, I was thinking back to when I was in high school, first learning what this thing called improvisation was. All right, there's my high school uh, jazz band. I was in the JV jazz band my freshman year, and then I moved up to varsity for the rest of high school. And <laughs> there's my buddy Jeff uh, with his sousaphone, full disclosure. There's a little bit of Photoshopping going on <laughs> to get him in there. Um, but I promised to, to, to uh, feature him since he had the wherewithal to order yearbooks all through high school. I didn't, so I just had him scan those pictures and send them to me. Thank you, Jeff. But in high school, I was trying to figure this thing out, and, and there wasn't, you know, this was pre-internet. There wasn't a lot of, of information available on this. There were books I could order through the mail, and, you know, the, uh, there wasn't a lot of information outside of that. So I'm trying to figure this thing out in high school. And, you know, at, at first I'm thinking, well, you just, you just play notes and you figure out how it works together and, you know. Hmm, that didn't work out too well. So I'm thinking, okay, there's got to be a little more of a science to this. And then I thought, well, the chord changes, they have notes in them and you just have to play the notes in the changes. So then my improvising went to something like, uh... yeah. but the guys I was listening to, the pros, they're playing more than that. There's got to be more than just playing the notes in the chord. And then I discovered the scale chord relationship. Okay, I figured that was it. I just play the scales that are related to the chords. And then my improvising was like... But the guys I'm listening to are not playing scales. They're playing melodies. They're playing beautiful music. Where are they coming up with the notes for this? Okay. And at some point, I don't know exactly when, I kind of figured out that it wasn't about the mechanics of scales and patterns and chord tones. It was really about composing in your mind, but that your musical sense would guide you into where the right notes are as you listen to the harmony, right? And that's been a lifelong evolving process. That's where my books and my videos and my blogs go to because I think that is a central issue. But 
Let's talk in this video about each of those three steps. And at the end, I'm going to show you how to combine those. And I think in the end, I'm going to help you answer that question better of what to play over the chord changes. So for this video, I'm using the tune Autumn Leaves. This is a great tune to play. It's fun. You know, it's got a great melody uh, and it's harmonically very simple. So you can basically improvise over this entire tune using nothing more than the C minor scale or B flat major, which is the same thing, or even G minor. You can use any of these three scales and quite frankly, more importantly, you can use any starting note as long as you just play in two flats through the whole tune. Now, if we want to get more technical about the chord changes, yeah, we could talk about some chords like the D7, which could use an F sharp or the A half diminished, where the B flat has kind of a distinctive sound like this. But if you're starting out with improvisation, keep it simple by paying attention to what the whole tune sounds like in just two flats. Okay, let's dig into this. Now, the, for the form of what I'm going to show you, I want to mirror what I described from high school. But unlike high school, we're not going to treat chord tones and scales as ends in themselves. We're going to talk about them as building blocks or a means to an end. Okay, so the first thing we're going to talk about are chord tones. And all I mean by chord tones is open up the book with whatever tune you're learning. Again, we're going to be doing all of this through Autumn Leaves, but it doesn't matter. Everything I tell you in this video will apply to any tune you ever want to learn. But have your book open, look at the chords, and let's just start very simple with just the root of the chord. So in this case, you're going to go... Now, we can add a note, we can add the second note in the chord. So now you're either going to play a major third or a minor third, <clears throat> at least with this tune. So that might sound something like this. do triads. So now we want to do the first three notes of the tune of, of each chord. And then obviously the next one is sevenths. Sevenths would sound something like this. Okay, a little embellishing along the way. I mean, we are talking about impro improvisation. So chord tones, just kind of work your way through the tune, figuring out where the, where, where the chords lie, where the, uh, you know, in this case, there aren't really any transitions or any modulations, but find out where those are. It's kind of like you move to a new neighborhood and you're gonna drive around, you're gonna figure out where the grocery store is and where the schools are and where the church is and get kind of the lay of the land. That's what that does, okay. Now, next, we're going to talk about scales. And again, not as an end in themselves, but as a means to an end to kind of get your, your fingers uh, used to where the available notes are, at least seven of the available notes. And uh, that might sound something like this. <laughs> Okay, so you can pause the video right then to kind of see what scales I played, but it's pretty straight ahead. It's pretty much two flats from root to root. One exception is the D7 flat nine. Notice in there, that's a D diminished scale. Diminished scales are important scales for you to learn because they really add a jazz flavor to your sound, especially when you're playing over seventh chords and turnarounds and things like that. But for the most part, 
those scales are pretty straight ahead. Lots of books, like I've said, that you can look up uh, the relationship between scales and chords, easy to find, uh, and I do recommend it. But the third step is the most important to helping you know what to play over jazz changes, and that's your ear. So here is the central skill to improvising. And let's back up from the instrument, because one of the things that presents a problem is you want to learn a tune, and the first thing you do is you pick up your instrument, whatever instrument it is, and you just start playing. And if it's a tune you're unfamiliar with or a tune a little bit above your comfort zone, you're not going to love how you sound. And that's because you've taken the machine first instead of taking your inner ear first. Here's what I mean by that. Do you hear what you're about to play? And the way to know that is by singing. I think singing is a huge um, skill to be developed. Not good singing, not quality singing, but being able to hear the frequencies and the pitches. So what I mean by that is if, if I'm going to take Autumn Leaves, and let's just take those first four notes. Ba, 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 ba. 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 Ba, Notice I had to kind of find it. This is not good singing. Good singing means you, <laughs> you nail the pitch, just like on your instrument. But the, the key is, do you get there? And do you hear it? And now let's just pick another note. Let's pick B flat. Ba, 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 ba. Ba, 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 ba. Ba, 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 ba. Ba, 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 ba. Okay? You don't have to do this on video in front of the whole world. You can do this in your car, you can do this in the shower, it doesn't matter. But I, I think what it does is it, first of all, confirms that you have it in your head. If you're trying to play a tune and you can't sing some of the basic parts of the melody, uh, you need to listen to the tune more. Find other people that are playing it well. Listen to that. Listen to Abersoul. Listen to Band in the Box. Listen, uh, if you have the facility, play it on piano. Get it inside here before you expect to get it out of here. Um, and, you know, it's like if I said, let's play Autumn Leaves in F sharp minor. Right? Your first reaction is probably, oh, no, no, F sharp minor, too hard. That's a, that's a hard key. Can we do something easier? But I think that's, a, and, and by the way, if somebody, you know, I was playing and somebody called a, a non-standard tune in a weird key, I'd, I'd be tempted to say the same thing. But I think what it says is we're, we're using our intellect more than we're using our ears when we have that reaction. Because, I mean, keys are keys. We play in, brass players are playing flat keys more than we play in sharp keys, no doubt. But if we were to try and say, okay, let's play Autumn Leaves in F sharp. <laughs> First of all, can I sing it? Do, 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 Okay? So now let's try and play that, and let's improvise a little bit in that key and see, see if we can do that. It doesn't have to be complicated, um, simpler. Wow, we just played Autumn Leaves in F sharp minor, okay? If you relax, and you use your ear because the whole time I'm, I'm hearing the harmony and I'm kind of thinking, where is this naturally leading? Not trying to be overly complicated in big intervals, but just really trying to focus my, my inner ear on projecting what it's hearing in simple forms outside the horn. Try that exercise. And by the way, 
do this on a whole bunch of other tunes. Um, I've got a video on YouTube just about happy birthday and being able to play that in a whole bunch of keys. Here's a list of tunes that uh, my friend Tom Irvin um, put together. Uh, Great minds think alike. He wrote a book many years ago and talked about this. There's a list of some great tunes just to dig in. Pick a note. Doesn't matter which note. Go circle of fifths, go whole, whole steps, half steps. Um, and doesn't have to be fast. And by the way, if you stumble, sing, then play. Stumble, sing, then play. Let me add one quick thing about what to play over chord changes, because I wanted to mention this real quick. You can simply paraphrase the melody. Uh, especially starting out. So if you were to do Autumn Leaves, it would be maybe something like... Uh... Right? No one's, no, one's, no one's going to judge you and say, oh, that wasn't really improvising. You played close to the melody. And in fact, your audience, I think, would appreciate being able to kind of recognize the tune within your playing. I think that's a, a, a little tip that's worth throwing in there. So, what do you play over chord changes? You're going to play chord tones. You're going to play scales and patterns. You're going to paraphrase the melody. And you're going to use your ear. You're going to use the music you hear inside your head, use the techniques we've talked about to project that outside of your instrument. I would offer you a 30-day challenge. And the 30-day challenge is to do some component of the things we've talked about each day. And it doesn't mean that you've got to play Autumn Leaves in F-sharp all the way through the tune, band in the box in F-sharp, playing it all day. It doesn't, doesn't have to be that way. Do little bits of the things we've talked about every day for 30 days, and then turn on a tune, maybe that you've, you, you, you haven't played in a long time, and, and do you feel like you're, you're, you're getting to the notes a little quicker than you used to? Do you feel like your sense of melody is projecting out of the horn a little better than it used to? Do you find that the improvisation is just a little bit easier? I think you will. The people I've worked with and I go through these, these techniques, they're amazed at the end of just even an hour that they're playing these tunes much better. So give yourself a 30-day challenge. Let's see how that works out. The last thing I want to say is I'm going to end this video by playing a chorus of Autumn Leaves in G, not F sharp. And um, I'm also going to put a link to the backing track that I've created for you to practice with if you don't have it. But Autumn Leaves is pretty easy. Abersold, Band in the Box, uh, Learn Jazz Standards. He's got tons of YouTube videos on standards. I, I know this is in there. I, I think it's in there. Um, and then on my solo, if you want to, I'm going to, I'm going to probably transcribe it and put it on the video, but maybe you don't look at the video, transcribe it. Transcribing is a great uh, way to learn improvisation. I've got a video on transcribing if you want to look at that. So lots of things to work on. And I guess that is the key, the key. I, I wish I had a magic pill that I could just send you and you would be a master improviser. If I did that, I'd probably be on my yacht. It's Sunday and I'd probably be sitting on my yacht outside of my island. But there is no magic pill. It's doing some basic fundamental things on a regular basis that build this skill. And I do think, like I said in the 30 Day Challenge, I think if you do these things, you're going to find out that you do know what to play over chord changes. Hope that helped. Thanks for watching.